With a new project created, find the map pack you want from the vault and add it to the project. For this tutorial, let's take the conifer forest biome by Maui, as it is one of the best looking maps and it's currently free, but also comes with some issues we need to fix. Once everything has loaded inside the editor, you could jump right into the map and play right away since the game instance in this project is universal. To automate the level loading process, we need to edit two blueprint widgets. Let's open the main menu widget. In here, we need to visualize the levels box. This might be hidden, so click on the little eye icon in the outliner to reveal it. Scroll to the bottom of the list, where you find level 03 and image 16. Simply select both, duplicate and paste them into the levels list so that they remain in the same category. Assign a picture to image 17 and make sure its dimensions are set to 860 by 360 so that it fits well into the box with the other images. Now back to the level button. Scroll to the very bottom of its options and press on clicked. This will automatically put you into the graph editor and create a new event. Let's move it to the other level events. Duplicate the load single player function and connect it with the new level event. We need to designate the actual map name for this function to work. To do so, type the exact map name or copy its name and paste it into the function. Lastly, at the bottom of the graph you find a section called load levels. Navigate to the make map function and simply add another row. Paste the map name into the key and select the same image used before from the drop down menu. Next, open up the Level Select widget. In here, scroll all the way to the bottom and select Level Dropdown. Expand the default options, add a new row and paste the name of the map in here as well. Now switch over to the graph and do the same as we did before with the Make Map function by adding a new row, pasting the name, and selecting the fitting image. Safe and close. Finally, if you want to play in a packaged game, you need to edit the project settings. Scroll down to packaging and then scroll down the list until you find list of maps to include in the packaged build. Add a new row and this time we don't need to paste the name but its file path. So once again, select the map in the content browser, but this time right click it and select copy file path. Paste this into the list to complete the first part of this tutorial. With loading the level through the in-game menus done, we can now create deeper ties between the level and MPS. Many levels, especially those with procedurally generated content, use volume. These can block traces and particles. To fix this, once again open up the project settings and find collision under engine. Add a new object channel called volume and set its behavior to ignore. In the level outliner, search for volume and select the foliage volumes. Navigate to collision, expand collision presets and change the object type to the volume object type we just created. Now particles and traces only collide with solids. Sounds and surface effects, i.e. footsteps and bullet impacts, are assigned by surface type called physical material. MPS already comes with a few, so all that needs to be done is to make the new level communicate with the system. Select the landscape in the outliner and select its material. You might end up with the material instance, in that case scroll all the way down and find the parent material. This setup will vary greatly from creator to creator, but in general, there should be a section with different surface types. Following this example, there are four surfaces, which we can use to influence our physical materials. Right-click anywhere in the Material Editor and type in, Landscape Physical Material Output. Create the needed number of inputs and assign the physical materials. 
Connect the mask layer outputs to the corresponding inputs of the physical material output. Note that the landscape physical material output function is a bit buggy in its current state. As you can see, I created PM ground twice, even though the node accepts multiple inputs. The problem that arises this way is that no physical material gets assigned if multiple surfaces share the same node, as if the node is overwhelmed. Therefore, simply create multiple inputs to bypass this bug. To apply physical materials to the static meshes, you can filter only static meshes in the content browser. Select meshes that should use the same physical material and use asset actions, bulk edit via property matrix, which allows for fast iteration. In this pop-up window, find simple collision physical material within body setup and apply the correct physical material. Do this for each surface type. However, if you test this out now in the Kana for Biome, you will see no effect. This is because these changes only affect models which you place by hand in the level. This map is entirely procedurally generated using generator volumes and the foliage mode. Therefore, we need to jump into foliage mode and one more time select the meshes which we want to change. Make sure that collision type is set to block all and receive decals is checked. Lastly, assign the correct physical material override. Sometimes, the editor will tell you to rebuild the physical material. Do so by selecting Build and choosing either Build All Landscapes or directly Build Physical Material Only. With all this implemented, the character will be more grounded in this world, creating a richer gameplay loop. Lastly, here are some quick tips to improve performance with Unreal Engine 5. Use world partitioning for large maps as it creates chunks of logic blocks and doesn't fully load distant terrain and meshes. Go to Tools, Convert Level and select the map you want to convert. A pop-up menu will come up, with a bunch of settings that can be left with their default settings. Choose in place if you want to convert the existing map into a world partition map or leave it blank to create a copy of your map. Press OK to start the conversion. Once loaded, you will see a more or less blank level and a new tab next to World Settings called World Partition. Select or drag over the map to load cells. Right-click and select Load Selected Regions. You can fine-tune the grid sizes in World Settings, World Partition and Runtime Settings. While static lighting is great for performance and looks great. Dynamic Lightning, especially now with Lumen, is the future. It is very performance intense though, so setting up your projects correctly is important. Make sure you are on DirectX 12 and SM6, in order to be able to use Lumen, the real-time global illumination engine of UE5. One simple option to change, which significantly boosts performance and doesn't require any additional work can be found in project settings as well. Use the search bar to find allow static lightning and uncheck it. This requires a restart of the editor. Note, many projects still use static lightning and have their objects set up accordingly. In the outliner, select all the static meshes and change the mobility from static to movable. Next, select all the lights in your scene and change their mobility to movable as well. If you have changed all the scene components and didn't miss one, you won't get the message to rebuild lightning. Now, the level is fully dynamic and can use Lumen without drawbacks. Next, you can enable Nanite for static meshes, one of the major features of UE5. However, this doesn't always improve performance and can even tank it. In my testing with the Conifer Biome, enabling Nanite for all the static meshes, including trees with the new WPO caused a decrease of 15 to 20 FPS. 
Another map I tested Nanite with was the storage house set by Alexander Saikov. It is composed of hundreds of low to mid poly meshes in a tight space. Enabling Nanite in this environment boosted performance significantly. So carefully consider whether your project needs all the new features of UE5 enabled or if it's better to have some turned off for now. Thanks for watching, I hope you've learned something. See you in the next tutorial.